Hi viewers, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will discuss the exercise of revenge, which is unit number one. So the question number one is, in paragraph three, there are several words related to tying up the elephant securely. Use your dictionary and the context to explain them. The first word is tethered. So first of all, we will discuss the context in which this word was used in the story. So the context is, then he had tethered her securely between two immense and immovable trees. Okay. So the meaning of this word is tie, for example, an animal with a rope or chain so as to restrict its movement. The next word is keeping her bound. Context. To be doubly sure of keep her bound, he had used not the usual lightweight fetters with which elephants are shackled at night, but the heavy iron towing chains that are employed in the harnessing of logs. So the meaning of this word is compelled to stay in a territorial limit or boundary. The next word is fetters. The context is to be doubly sure of keep her bound, he had used not the usual lightweight fetters with which elephants are shackled at night, but the heavy iron towing chains that are employed in the harnessing of logs. So the meaning of this word is a chain which is used to restrain a prisoner typically placed around the ankles. Next word is shackled. Context. To be doubly sure of keeper bound, he had used not the usual lightweight fetters with which elephants are shackled at night, but the heavy iron towing chains that are employed in the harnessing of logs. The meaning of the word shackled is chain, restrain or limit someone's, for example, prisoners or animals with shackles. The last word is towing chains. Context. To be doubly sure of keep her bound, he had used not the usual lightweight fetters with which elephants are shackled at night, but the heavy iron towing chains that are employed in the harnessing of logs. Meaning, pull, for example, another vehicle or boat along with a rope, chain or tow bar. This is something which is related to motor vehicle or boats or luggage. Question number two. Match the following words from the text in the left hand column to their correct meanings in the right hand column. So the first word is sparse. Then we have mount, upheaval, forage, succulent, locate, momentum, horse okay so these are this is the column b first word is writing elephant then we have commotion then force husky scanty search for food juicy and finds so now we will choose the correct meaning of sparse so the correct meaning of sparse is scanty the correct meaning of mount is riding elephant. The correct meaning of the word upheaval is commotion. The correct meaning of the word forage is search for food. The correct meaning for the word succulent is juicy. The correct meaning for the word locates is finds. The meaning of the word momentum is force and the meaning of the word horse is husky. Question number three. In the following sentences, fill in the gap with an appropriate word from the text revenge above. The paragraph in which the word appears is indicated in brackets. For example, as the huge bird of prey flew overhead, we heard the dash of its 
wings. So from the paragraph number one, we can insert a word flapping. So the next question is, as the news agent was the only one in the dash, the shopkeeper made a good living. So if we look at the paragraph number two, so the best option is vicinity. Next one is from the viewpoint far above the town, we could hear the dash of the church bells. From paragraph number four, the best option is peeling. Before the earthquake, people felt the dash and ran out in terror from their houses. So we can fill this blank with the word tremor from paragraph number 6. Part D. The dash work started this week in preparation for building the new road. The best option or the best word which we can pick from paragraph number 7 is demolition. Part E. The operation on the little girl was successful, but the doctor warned her parents that she would be dashed to infection for many months. So the best word from the paragraph number 7 is vulnerable. Question number 4. In paragraph 8, the writer describes how a bolt of lightning split the sky. Use your thesaurus and dictionary to find as many different meanings of the word bolt as you can. For each of the different meanings you can find, write a sentence using the word bolt. So now we will see different meanings and definitions of bolt and their sentences and synonyms as well. So the first one is quick movement. Sentence. At the first whiff of smoke, the horse bolted from the barn. Synonyms of this word includes agility, scramble, fly and fluent. The next meaning of the word bolt is a screw-like metal object without a point used with a nut to fasten things together. Sentence. He couldn't find any nuts to fit the bolts he was using. Synonyms of bolt are fastener, rivet, screw, dowel and peg. The third meaning of the word bolt is a flash of lightning that looks like a white line against the sky. Sentence the house next to ours was struck by a bolt of lightning. Synonym Thunder and Storm The fourth meaning of the word bolt is to eat food very quickly. Sentence Don't bolt your food like that. You will get indigestion. Synonyms Bing, Feast, Bite and Picnic the fifth word is to lock a door or window by sliding a bolt across. Sentence is, have you locked and bolted the door? The synonyms are bar, handcuff, latch, lock and padlock. So the next question is reading for understanding. Question number one. What had the elephant handlers done? after the young man had been buried? This question is from paragraph number one. The answer of this question is, the elephant handlers had begun to flee the camp, taking their elephants with them after the young man had been buried. Question number two. How had Shui Dok, the dead man's elephant, been behaving? This question is from paragraph number two. The answer is, Shui Dok was restless, nervous, frequently flapping her ears and clawing the air with the top of her trunk. 
Question number three. What had the Shinhawk done to ensure that Shui Dok did not break free? This question is from paragraph number three. Answer is, he had tethered Shui Dok securely between two immense and immovable trees to be doubly sure of keep her bound. He had used not the usual lightweight fetters with which elephants are shackled at night, but the heavy iron towing chains that are employed in the harnessing of logs. Question number four. What were the signs that a storm was approaching? This question is from paragraph number four. Answer. Gathering up of the evening clouds and absence of stars from the sky were some of the signs of an approaching storm. Question number five. Why was the Shinnok so sure that Shui Dok had been freed by a human hand? This question is from paragraph number 5. The answer is, Shinnok was so sure that Shui Dok had been freed by a human hand because he was able to hear the tinkling sound Shui Dok's bell approaching towards the camp, but he was not able to hear the sound of broken chain dragging along with the Shui Dok's feet. Question number six. Explain exactly what happened between Shui Dok moving towards the Thai and Mackay Takin shooting her. This question is from paragraph number six. The answer is, after hearing to the tinkling of the bell and feeling the tremor of the elephant's approaching weight, Mackay came to the veranda of his Thai with a lantern in one hand and his hunting rifle in the other. When Shui Dok came close to the Thai, Mackay Thakin fired the bullet between her ear and eye. After being shot, Shui Dok continued her momentum and hit the tie at the junction of the two cross beams that held it together. Mackay Thakin was catapulted to the ground. Shui Dok turned towards Mackay Thakin and very slowly allowed her dying weight to go crashing down on him in a circular motion. Question number seven. Explain exactly how Shui Dok and Mackay Thakin died. This question is from paragraph number 7. Answer. After hearing to the tinkling of the bell and feeling the tremor of the elephant's approaching weight, Mackay came to the veranda of his tie with a lantern in one hand and his hunting rifle in the other. When Shui Dok came close to the tie, Mackay Thakin fired the bullet between her ear and eye. After being shot, Shui Dok continued her momentum and hit the tie at the junction of the two cross beams that held it together. Mackay Thakin was catapulted to the ground. Shui Dok turned towards Mackay Thakin and very slowly allowed her dying weight to go crashing down on him in a circular motion. Question number 8. What did the storyteller and the Shinhawk see next to the huge footmark? Of Shui Dok. This question is from paragraph number 8. Answer. The storyteller and the Shinhawk saw small, curiously shapeless and oblong impression next to the huge footmark of Shui Dok and assumed it to be a human footprint. The next question is reading for detail. Question number 1. What was the storyteller able and not able to hear at the beginning of the story? This question is from paragraph number one. The answer is, at the beginning of the story, the storyteller was able to hear the sound of frogs, owls, and the feathery flapping of great jungle moths, but he was not able to hear the most familiar tinkling of elephants, bells, and sounds of other O.C. bustling in the camp. Question number two. What were the towing chains usually used for? Paragraph number three. The answer is the heavy iron towing chains were usually used in the harnessing of logs. Question number three. Which phrases in paragraph three suggest that the Shinhawk is not telling the storyteller everything that he has? in his mind. 
The answer is, Shane Hawk said to the storyteller that as a precautionary measure, he had tethered she dog with very heavy chains some half mile away from the camp in the clearings, but he was not able to explain convincingly that why he was taking this precaution and against what. Question number four. Which clauses in paragraph 5 and paragraph 6 suggest that the elephant was very heavy? The answer is, the shivering of the hut due to the elephant's tread and tremor felt by Mackay Thakin in his tie are the clauses in paragraph 5 and paragraph 6, suggesting that the elephant was very heavy. Question number 5. Why did Mackay Thakin aim at Shui Dok between her ear and eye. The answer is, Mekke Thakin aimed at Shui Dok between her ear and eye because it's the most vulnerable spot of the elephants. Question number 6. Which words and phrase in paragraph 8 describe movement, explain the kind of movement which each conveys? The answer is, the huge scalloped mark of Shui Dok's feet and a smaller, curiously shapeless and oblong impression of a human footprint are the words and phrases mentioned in paragraph 8 and describing the movement of Shui Dok and a person who supposedly released her from his captivity. Next part is reading for inference. Question number 1. Why do you think the elephant handlers fled the camp with their elephants as soon as the young man had been buried? This question is from paragraph number 1. The answer is, the elephant handlers fled the camp with their elephants as soon as the young man had been buried because it was their custom. Question number 2. Why was Shri Doc Blowing the air with the tip of her trunk. Paragraph number two. The answer is Shui Dok blowing the air with the tip of her trunk because she was restless and nervous due to the death of her long familiar handler. It was neither uncommon nor unexpected as elephant is a creature of habit and routine. Question number three. When the Shinnok answered just a precaution in paragraph 3, what do you think he was thinking might happen if he did not tie the elephant up so securely? The answer is, Shinnok was afraid of the restless and nervous behavior of Shui Dok. He was aware of the fact that the absence of long familiar handler can put Shui Dok out of temper and she can prove to be dangerous for the residents of the camp. Question number 4. When the storyteller heard the tiny fragile sound in paragraph 5, what was the sound and what was its significance? The answer is, the tiny fragile sound heard by the storyteller was of Shui Dok approaching towards the camp. Initially, storyteller thought that Shui Dok was panicked by the storm and managed to break loose of her fetters, but soon he realized that she was fed by some human as sound of dragon chain was not accompanied by the tinkling sound of elephant bell. Question number 5. In paragraph 7, why do you think the elephant stopped and lowered her head? The answer is, Shui Dok stopped and lowered her head because she was examining the structure of Mackay's tie and figuring out how to demolish it with a single blow. Question number 6. When the Shinnok saw the footprint, he cried out in a hoarse, stammering shout, What does this phrase tell you about how he was feeling? The answer is, when Shinhawk saw the footprint, 
he cried out in a hoarse stammering shout because he was astonished and surprised to see human footprint besides the scalloped mark of shoe dog's feet the next portion is speaking and listening in the story you have been working on there's a mystery discuss the following points and come to a conclusion as a group now the first part is how did the elephant shoe dog escape from her heavy chains the answer is shoe dog was able to escape from her heavy chains because she was most probably freed by shinok second one is why did she attack mackay thakin's tie the answer is she attacked mackay thakin's tie because her handler was died because of the falling log while carrying out the mackay's order and she wanted to take the revenge of her handler's death the third one is who had made the human footprint the answer is supposedly shinok freed the shoe dog from her heavy fetters and most probably he was the one who made human footprints beside scalloped mark of shoe dog's feet the fourth one is why is the story called revenge the answer of this question is storyteller decided to give the title revenge to this story because it was about the revenge of an elephant from the person who was responsible for the death of her long familiar handler the past perfective in the story revenge there are many examples of verbs in the past tense which use the auxiliary verb have or had example the shinok had taken the charge of the nephew's riderless elephant this is from the paragraph number 2 the another example is the shinhawk had decided not to allow shoe dog to forage through the night this one is from paragraph number 3 this form of past perfective is used when an action or an event was completed in the past write down five more examples of the past perfective from the text The other OC had begun to flee the camp taking their elephants with them example number 2 he had led her to a clearing some half miles distance from the camp and supplied her with a great pile of succulent tree top branches third he had tethered her securely between two immense and immovable trees The fourth example is he had used not the usual lightweight fetters with which elephants are shackled at night but the heavy iron towing chains that are employed in the harnessing of logs the fifth one is it had not rained much through the day the sixth example is the approach of evening clouds had begun to mass in the sky The seventh example of past perfective sentence is if she had broken loose the shinhawk said the chains would still be dragging on her feet the eighth example is mackay thakin had already heard the bells felt the tremor of the elephant's approaching weight thank you very much for watching my video and please do subscribe to my channel